With its stylish look, spacious cabin, and fun to drive edge, the 2024 Celtos earns its place in Kia's lineup, which is full of other vehicles with similar values. And with this 2024 refresh, it's even more attractive than before, and its interior has been updated with better infotainment and technology too. As for the Kona, it's been overhauled for 2024 both inside and out with a more futuristic look than any of its counterparts, and its design was obviously borrowed from its Ionic EV lineup. It also gets larger for 2024, which was arguably one of its main letdowns. And to help you choose between the two, in this video we'll compare both cars' designs inside and out, pricing and how they drive. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. The big visual change happens right up front with the latest interpretation of Kia's Tiger Nose grille. It's really given the car a fresh and modern look. The LED headlights are now projector LED, and they add a sleek and cool touch to the overall design. Some trims even have an additional LED stripe integrated into the flowing grille lines, and those skid plates up front, they might just be plastic, but they do wonders for the car's visual appeal. While the side profile remains mostly unchanged in this refreshed model, they've spiced things up a bit dependent on the trim level, with new wheel designs and different trim for the front fenders and side skirts. I have to say, this has got to be one of the most attractive small crossovers in America. The hatch used to be a bit dull with that chrome bar at the back, but now they've gone for a more modern approach with a red LED bar connecting the rear taillights. It looks really sharp. The only minor downside is that the turn signals are still incandescent instead of LED, but it's not really a deal breaker. To be honest, the Kona wasn't one of those vehicles that really stood out for me not even on the road. However, this new generation's design is futuristic and goes in line with the overall Hyundai face and look. The single LED bar across the front and the large trapezoidal opening in the lower fascia are the most prominent similarities. However, this model has split headlights that place the main laps in the far corners. The side profile is heavily inspired from the bigger Tucson, and the many folds and creases work surprisingly well, and the fact that Hyundai is having a coherent design aesthetic within their lineup is a good thing. Going towards the rear, a new large Kona lettering positioned in the center of the lift gate just below the Hyundai logo has been added, the revised taillights are now pushed down towards the corners mirroring the ones at the front, and a thin full-width LED stripe round out what is a really great looking crossover. Jumping inside, the interior is a massive step forward for this new generation model. It looks and feels so much more modern than the last one. The controls are still buttons and dials down below the screen where you've got temperature controls. Unfortunately, looking at the interior is a lot more enjoyable than sitting in it. The center console, dash top, switch surrounds, and door panels are all molded in rigid, unyielding plastic. The materials are also unacceptably shiny in the addition to feeling down market. A new single-piece frame surrounds and visually combines the infotainment screen and gouge cluster. All but the base LX are treated to a pair of 10.3-inch displays. And more than just looking good, Kia's infotainment interface is easy to navigate too. The shelf below the touchscreen serves as an ergonomic place to steady a hand while tapping. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. The bigger uplift happens inside the Kona. While the previous generation was bland looking, this new one is sleek and modern. The center console has been trimmed down and relocating the transmission selection buttons to a stock behind the steering wheel frees up space for a larger storage area. There is also a new steering wheel, and the front passenger enjoys extra utility thanks to a storage shelf on the dash. The rest of the cabin feels notably more upmarket than the previous Kona or the Seltos. There are soft touch finishes on all the key surfaces and robust, well-made plastics where they are needed in heavy-use areas. The open interior architecture also means storage is great. As for infotainment, the centerpiece of the Kona's cabin is undoubtedly the wide panel display that houses twin 12.3-inch displays. The touchscreen is loaded with Hyundai's newest infotainment system, which supports over-the-air updates to keep the software current. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are also standard. In spite of its lackluster interior materials, the Kia Seltos is a reasonably comfortable commuter. The front seats offer adjustable, well-placed lumbar support and good cushioning for long drives, although the seat bottom is too short for taller passengers. A reclining rear seat back is somewhat unusual in this class of vehicle, and it's a welcome addition to a spacious and comfortable back seat. There is also plenty of cargo volume. With the adjustable rear load floor in its lowest position, the Seltos can haul along 26.6 cubic feet with the rear seats up and 62.8 cubic feet with them folded down. The Kona seats not only look good, but are also comfortable, but just like the Seltos, the seat cushions might be a bit short for taller passengers. Rear leg room is much improved over the previous generation, but Kia still offers better rear seat support. 
As for cargo, you will find 25.5 cubic feet of space behind the rear seats, or 63.7 cubic feet with the back row folded down. When it comes to pricing, the new 2024 Hyundai Kona is bigger than its predecessor, and so is its starting price. The new model starts nearly $2,000 higher than before, with the base SE coming at $25,400. Next is the SEL at $26,800. There is an even bigger price bump for the upper trim level. The N-Line costs almost $32,000 at $2,800 extra over last year, and the Limited starts at $33,000, but both also come with a more powerful 190 horsepower turbocharged engine. As for Kia, the base LX pairs a 2-liter engine and all-wheel drive for $25,700. The $26,300S and $27,100 EX trims come standard with front-wheel drive. Adding all-wheel drive bumps up those prices by $1,500 and $2,200 respectively. If you want the potency of the turbocharged 1.6 liter, the X-Line will set you back $30,000, while the SX with all of its bells and whistles is the dearest at $31,300. As for driving and handling, the most notable change on the Celtos comes by way of the turbocharged 1.6-liter four-cylinder in the X-Line and SX trends. Horsepower is up by 20 to 195, while torque remains unchanged at 195 pound-feet. The 2-liter inline 4 and lower trim remains unchanged, delivering the same 146 horses and 132 pound-feet. He also ditched the outgoing 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission in favor of a more traditional 8-speed with a good old torque converter. Sure, the turbo engine's newfound power is both immediately noticeable and much appreciated, but it's the new transmission's more polished behavior that makes the biggest difference in the Celtos' on-road demeanor. Taking off and stopping are both much smoother now. The 2024 Celtos' suspension remains largely unchanged, which is good because we like its ride as much as before. Body motions are generally well controlled, and brake-based torque vectoring gives this little UT plenty of composure in more aggressive maneuvers. Acoustic front glass, new last year and still a welcome addition, keeps the cabin surprisingly quiet for budget crossover, with only a little bit of wind noise coming from around the side mirrors. If your commute is more stop-and-go than twisty switchbacks, the 2024 Celtos' revised cabin should make those journeys a little more pleasant. As for the Kona, on a quick introductory drive on a variety of road surfaces, types and bendiness, the new Kona feels like a much more polished drive. It's probably a little less interesting to drive than the previous car, which enjoyed a firmer setup on a shorter wheelbase. This new car is more interested in wide comfort, but despite the price increase, it's only the all-wheel drive models that get independent rear suspension setup. For most of the time, torsion beams at the rear play ball pretty well. Once the surface turns into a typical suburban road, you start to feel getting a bit busy, especially if you are in the back. As for engines, at least on the gas side only models, the powertrains are identical to those found in the Kia Seltos, so you should expect similar performance in fuel economy. The 2.0-liter engine remains fairly refined, and in concert with the Idle Traco 2, including the active flaps instead of a grill, are set to reduce consumption and improve refinement. The CVT automatic seems a little more refined and engaged with the job at hand, and even has 8 fake ratios programmed in. Again, it's like the rest of the non-electrified cars in the small SUV market, but quieter than most and very smooth. So, which one should you choose? Well, I believe the new Kona is a really nice take on this SUV crossover thing we've got going. Not only is it stylish and different than anything in its segment, it also provides ample space and choice when it comes to powertrains. In short, it does everything well while managing to look different in a segment that's getting crowded by the day.